Hey folks, welcome. Um, I'm carrying right on with this cookie jar biscuit barrel, okay? As I promised, and I wanted to finish that off for you. So, what we're going to do is put a handle on the lid. So, I've got a couple of handles here that I pulled, and so what I'm going to do is prepare the handle. So always with a handle, what you want to do is butt the end of it, like that. No butts about it, okay? You've got to do that, because that's going to provide extra clay, a lip of clay there, you see, uh, which is going to be useful for joining the handle. Um, so the next thing is taking the lid, we've got to think about where that handle's going to join onto there so wetting my finger okay scratching using my finger and water that's all you need to do to key it you see create the slip right there all right take your handle that you've that you've prepared and you use your knuckle to do that you see that's why god gave you a knuckle so now what we're going to do is we're going to offer that handle up right there. You see? Give it a bit of firm pressure. Now using my thumb like that and my index finger on the underside we're going to join that. Okay, so at the moment it's looking like that. Remember always support handles, never let them droop. Dip that in the in the water pot, and now pull the handle away, which is not really pulling it; it's just freshening freshening up the handle. You understand? Um, now I just put a. Can you see? I put a uh, a line down there like that, using my thumb. just a little decorative feature. Okay, so with him hanging, take him by the end and bring him around like that, you see. And now bring him down till you think you're happy with the... happy with the look. Yeah, that's it. Happy with the look. In layman's terms, we could say that we're happy with the look. Okay. Right now, what we want to do is just wipe your finger over there where it's wet because you don't want it wet where you're going to smear it, you see. You take your thumb and now we're just going to smooth them first that way and now that way. And this tail, flick him off. I'm doing a batch of these, you're going to see me doing more of these coming up and I'm going to be throwing uh, some more. So that's what that is looking like. But we haven't finished yet because what I want to do is flute it, you see. Flute. So in my toolbox here I have a fluting tool which is a, a hacksaw blade 
and you can see that was the end where it attached at one end and then it was about about so long and it broke in the middle here you see so you can use that flat side there or the rounded end here where it attaches or it used to attach to the hacksaw you can also use that I tend to use that you can also use these 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 teeth here can be useful for making marks. Okay. So what I'm going to do is get a chair, bring it here, a stool. I'm going to sit down here, kind of in the sun a bit. I'll sit down there like that. I'm going to sneeze. Okay, I'm going to use a rounded end. So, starting at the top here and go all the way down, right? Have a go at doing this. Important thing is to get it going straight, you see. It's easy to veer off, you see. Have a go at doing some fluting. Try on not such a long flute, try shorter. What you can do is, before you start fluting, because the number one problem with fluting is, is keeping it going straight, you see. So what you could do is, with a pencil, just lightly make a, a guide every once in a while, you know, every quarter or every eighth of a way around, put a pencil mark, you see, and you'll use that pencil mark as a guide, yeah? Now I'm used to doing this and I can do it pretty straight. That's only because I've been practicing it over a, over a lot of years, you know. My dad was very good at fluting. He was well known for his fluting. Fluted porcelain. Before you start fluting, you do want to have a surface that is not too rough, okay? Because otherwise, as you, as you make the flute, the tool is going up and down, and that doesn't look good, I don't think. Carving, isn't it, really? It looks difficult, but it's not as difficult as it looks. So have a go. So if you notice that you are veering off very slightly, which you, you 
may well do. The thing is to spot it to spot it quickly, you see, and then make make the necessary adjustment. Now I'm noticing that I'm very slightly going off here, so I've got to I've got to make an adjustment. So if you make adjustments, you want to do them gradually. Don't make a sudden adjustment if you've gone way out because it'll... what you want to do is you see is blend it in. And if you make a very sudden adjustment, you won't be able to blend it. So you've got to blend it. That's why you've got to keep visually, you've got to keep on top of it to make sure that you keep it going straight you need to be aware also when you're doing this of the the thickness of your the wall of your pot you see now as I'm doing this fluting I've got my finger here on the inside right up underneath each flute you see just in case I can as I pull the tool down I can feel on my finger through the clay I can feel it you know so this kind of uh, carving looks very nice under for example Temaku glaze, which is a black and brown iron glaze. It can also look very nice under a celadon glaze. I don't find the celadon glaze very popular here in the States. I think the reason for that is it's too much of a, an understated glaze and it doesn't suit the American taste. Generally. I think here people prefer more, a little bit more lively. Yeah, you see. It's a quiet glaze, isn't it, Sullivan? It's an acquired taste. It's like a good wine or a good cheese. You may not like it at first, but you grow to like it. So, Probably takes about 10 minutes to do one of these. So when you flute, keep your arm, keep your right arm, your elbow tucked in, you see, so you're only moving, only moving your arm from the elbow. Don't move your wrist here, it's not a wrist movement. It's an arm movement. You pivot here, you see. You scribe the arc from there. Although you're not scribing an arc, you're in fact scribing a straight line. But it's very easy, you see. You could be fluting like this, and if you if you're not careful, you see, you make it go in a curve because of this 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 uh, this circle that you're scribing. So as you cut down, you've then got to maintain it straight, which is the difficult part. So 
So as I start the cut at the top here, I get about halfway to there, and now I've got to I've got to sort of extend out my fingers with the, the hacksaw blade here to get it going straight and not going round the corner. But you know, for all all that being said, it's you know, I don't want to make it sound complicated, but it's it's a very forgiving decoration, you see. And you'll find that when you do it, you'll be surprised how good you can get it. And um, your eye, you see, kind of um, it focuses on the sum total of all of the flutes. It doesn't pick out individual flutes unless they're really bad. But so long as you get them all reasonably the same, let's see if we can bring that camera in a touch. Uh, I hope that's going to be in the picture. Is that in the picture? So I'm getting close now, you see. Joining up round the other side. As you do the flute, you want to keep it, keep it going, all right? Don't hesitate. So now I've got to calculate one, two, three, maybe four. I've got one more to do there. Somehow I've got to tie it in at the bottom there. But it doesn't matter if it doesn't quite tie in perfectly. Got to bear in mind, you see, that we're not machines. It's very easy to sort of get into the thinking, oh, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to make this so it's so perfect it looks like a machine has done it. Yeah, well, I don't know if that's actually a good idea. Uh, let's pull that back a bit. That needs a seal to go on the bottom. Let me show you that, see if you think it's any good. All right, so that's... So I'm turning it around. All right, biscuit barrel, cookie jar. You'll notice there is a bevel on the bottom. It's important to have that bevel there, okay? On the bottoms of all your pots. We need to put a seal on that, don't we? Let's quickly do that.
USA. Made in the USA. Okay, folks, well, there it is. A cookie jar biscuit barrel uh, in the style of my brother, Jeremy. Um, I am going to be making more of those. And in fact, I've already made one there, you can see. I'm going to be starting to make a batch. So, in my next video, I will show you. Sorry, I will show you how to make, how to throw, how to throw the body, and how to throw the lid. Um, I've done this a little bit back to front. I know. Um, so all that this needs now is just to dry out. So I put a handle on there, and always a good idea if you add if you add an appendage, you know, to a pot, okay, make sure it dries slowly. And um, so just put a bag over it, but don't let the bag, if possible, touch the wet handle, okay? Because when you pull the bag off, it'll may distort the handle or it may push it out of shape. So sort of uh, make a tent, a tent of a, of a, around it like that and just leave it, okay? Hey, thanks for joining us, folks. And don't forget, visit my website, simonleachpottery.com. And um, what else can I say? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. I proved it in my life, I know it's true. Hey, take care. Bye-bye. Dee, dee, dee.